turn on the mic. <laughs> this is a time when we share in, uh, in laughter. It's part of something that I introduced into this because just thinking back of the old days where the Reader's Digest, you know, laughter is the best medicine. And it really, in many ways, it really, truly, truly is. And so I've been having people send me jokes because I ran out of them. So if you have some. <laughs> so I don't remember who, who sent me this one, but it says, um, MIT graduate interview. Reaching the end of a job interview, the human resources officer asked a young engineer fresh out of Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and what starting salary are you looking for? The engineer replies, well, uh, in the region of 125,000 a year, depending on the benefits package. The interviewer glances over her assistant, gives her one of those mm-hmm looks, <laughs> and she said, oh, sure, 125,000, no problem. So what would you say to a package of five weeks vacation, 14 paid holidays, full medical and dental, company matching retirement fund to 50% of salary, and a company car leased every two years, say, a red Corvette. Boy, this guy, he's sitting up, boy, he sits up straight up, his eyes are that big, and says, are you kidding? And the interviewer says, well, yeah, but you started it. <laughs> <laughs> A hundred and twenty-five thousand. Sure, no problem. <laughs> so this week, we continue and conclude our review of Unity's five principles with a look at principle number five, which states, I do and give my best by living the truth I know. I make a difference. I make a difference. I call this walking the walk. And I get that phrase from... Jimmy Johnson, who used to be the Dallas Cowboy head coach back when the Cowboys were winning uh, championships, which is about five or 600 years ago now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, somewhere around that range. <laughs> because you know, a lot of people in sports like to trash talk. And one time Jimmy tells them, if you're gonna talk the talk, you gotta walk the walk. So basically that's saying you need to put your words into action. And in this case, it means putting our beliefs into action. In the booklet, which we have outside, and which you can get in five easy payments, by the way, <laughs> and also with the five principles, uh, they're available in five easy payments. <laughs> in, in the king, keys to the kingdom, kingdom the, the five principles section starts with this regarding walking the walk. It says, merely owning a deluxe set a bodybuilding equipment does not produce physical improvement. Gains are made only when these tools are consistently used. In the same way, comprehending the nature of God and humankind, understanding the power of the mind, and knowing how to pray will not stimulate spiritual growth unless it is applied to daily living. Hmm, walk the walk. Practice, practice, practice. We've been talking about that for several weeks now. This is such a key point. I want to be clear that we are clear on this idea of practice. In fact, next week I will introduce some more spiritual practices that I want you to familiarize with yourself with that Unity has. I'm not sure that you know that they're there, and I want to make sure that you do know. So that's one of the many, many distinct uh, differences between Unity approach to spirituality and, and tradition. It is that unity represents a change of view that flows over from Sunday into all the rest of the week. So the practices that we part participate in here during on Sunday mornings, the meditations, the spiritual practices, the affirmative prayers, the singing, all these are for the purpose of ultimately helping you establish to have these practices during the week. So we're not just Sunday. We don't come to, like, in, in, you know, when growing up Catholic, you go to Sunday, uh, to church on Sunday, and you're done for the week. It's like, I don't have to think about that anymore. <laughs> it's kind of like, nah, it's more of a change in the lifestyle, in how you see things. Unity sees things very differently. We have a different approach of, to life, and 
and, and a different approach to how we live life. In short, it's a transformation. And that is exactly the goal that we seek in unity. Is that transformation complete? No, of course not. But is it underway? Yes, it is underway. If you in the Unity Center, your transformation process has begun. But the practices is a big part of it. And so we do this all over again. And so as I said, we don't seek salvation in unity. For us, we're eternal beings. It, that's our starting point. So we're not looking for salvation. We're looking for transformation. A different way of looking at this miracle that we call life. And of course, the change starts from within, not from without. Jesus said to Nicodemus one time, he said, no one can see the kingdom unless ye, he be born again. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. And of course, Nicodemus, his response is like, well, how can a grown man enter back into his mother's womb? And I said, Nicodemus, you're not getting the point here, sir. <laughs> and understandable, because it has to do with, you know, spiritual stages of unfolding. And Jesus was trying to tell him that in, we need to see this material existence as secondary in nature and not primary in nature to what we say, that we're spirits having a human experience, to see life from a higher and a new perspective. And that is what my mantra, I've told you over and over, my mantra, I, start, I, used, I started it back at RGV and I used to start every Sunday, we have got to change the way that we see things. And that's what he's telling, Jesus was telling Nicodemus, you must be born again. And that's what that means. It, it is consistent with our fundamental view that life happens from the inner world into the outer world, from that which is not seen to that which is seen. And once again, in reference to the keys to the kingdom, there's an article at the very beginning, and it was written by Connie Fillmore, same lady, great granddaughter of the Fillmores, uh, and same lady who wrote uh, The Five Principles. And she says this, in, in case you're not clear about Unity's position on this, in Unity we believe that the entire world and everything in it had its beginning as an idea. And where do we get that from? In the beginning was the word, right? We believe that everything can, we can see and touch is a manifestation of the interaction between the mind of God and the thinking of human beings. In a very real sense, you and I have created our individual experiences, and these experiences merge with those experiences of other people, and together we create this universe, this world. This is completely contrary to traditional thinking, which says that life is happening to us, that we're victims. And, but that's part of the separation consciousness that has existed for a very long time. That's beginning to change. The new edge thinking is telling us that no, it's not happening to us, it's happening by us. That we have more control than we know, especially when we get together in numbers. Numbers is important, as I said earlier, because your energy and my energy, and we were talking about that Wednesday in, in, with, with, with Elle, because she was, she's gonna help us out a little bit because all these things that come up during these, these uh, talks, uh, discussions. And we talked about, uh, Elle was going to do something uh, about heart math. When we get to this uh, practice, the spiritual practice that we do during the service, well, we're going to have one pretty soon with Elle having something about heart math institute. I, I'm surprised that a lot of people don't know what, do you all know what heart math is? Yes? Okay, a lot of people don't. So that's why we're going to introduce you to that. And then um, I forgot who it was. I think it was Kathy, right? Kathy Regan, who says she does Qigong. And I said, why don't you come in and let's do a little practice on Qigong one Sunday. So we want to introduce more things like that again so that you can take these home and, and actually put them to, to use because part of the changing how we see things because we have not fully accepted our role as co-creators, active participants in the universe. That is what we're working on. We, <coughs> as the book said, we don't use that power very well yet because it's a new tool that we have and we haven't mastered it. And then when we do use it, we, we use it with 
without the total conviction that it requires. And we're, I'm guilty, we're all guilty of it. And so it kind of doesn't, so most of the sometimes it doesn't work and it reinforces the idea that, well, because it doesn't work, because that's not true. But it's not that it's not true, is that we don't have the conviction. Believe that you can. It's, it's a hard thing to, to change because of how our background, especially when, like me, I didn't get introduced to unity till I was 50 years old. You know, if I, if I had from day one or, or let's say five, six uh, uh, lifetimes ago, you know, maybe things would be different. But, <laughs> but we're learning that what we focus on, we empower. And that's part of this putting things into practice idea. That applies to everything that we do. If you want to be some, if you want to see something, be that that you want to see. And she talks about that on page 119 of the book. She says, this is good to know. It means that rather than fighting against whatever we dislike, we simply withdraw our energy from it and it will leave our experience. Let me read that again. Withdraw your energy from it and it will leave our experience. Do you believe that? Does that sound strange to you? Maybe a little or a lot, woo woo? <laughs> Any old quotes come to mind about that statement? How about resist not evil? So if you thought that was woo woo, then I guess you suppose that the Bible is woo woo too, because that's where that comes from. And if you think that's woo woo, then you think that quantum physics is woo woo, because it, ta, quantum physics is telling us that without the observer, there is nothing to observe. That we draw forth the manifestation through observation. So now science is woo-woo as well. <laughs> so, so where are we going to go with this? Is there another phrase that, sounds, that talks about something similar? Yes. That which you resist persists. And I think I read that Jung used that a lot. Is that true? That he, yeah, that he used that a lot. So now psychology has joined the woo-woo circle. The entire universe is. I'm telling you, Einstein said this. He said, you have two ways of looking at this life. One is as if nothing is a miracle, and the other is as if everything is a miracle. Which one do you like? Hmm, that's it. Yeah. Co Unity co-founder Charles Fulmer wrote, Pronounce every experience good and of God, and by that mental attitude, you will call forth only the good. What seemed error will disappear, and only the good will remain. This is the law, and no one can break it. That's what Fillmore said. And that's strange, because principle five is telling us to walk the walk, to get our hands dirty, you know, to, to get into them, into the mixture of things, and Fillmore's words and that other uh, statement almost says like, oh, turn your back on it, get away, and don't even think about it, and it'll it disappear. But, but Reverend uh, Ellen, the author, she says, so one, one can argue, but we've got to do something. It doesn't affect me, maybe, but it affects other people, and it seems it has to be stopped, and it's, it's, it's bad, and I would be cold and selfish, she, she writes, not to care. Well, she goes on and says, I'm not saying not to care. I'm saying to be careful how you care. Are you caring through resistance or through support, she says. Are you against something or in favor of its opposite? So that's kind of the thing that came to my mind was like, like catching flies with honey instead of vinegar. She said, make sure your actions come from an energy of what you are for, positive affirmations, because those of you who are familiar with the law of attraction, you know that words really matter. And what you say, you, you have to understand what it is the universe is hearing from you. What is it hearing from you? And so that's why you have to be cautious with your words and the energy you put forth. So she says, suppose you're at a buffet table and there's all this food. And some of it you like and some of it you don't like. Would you throw a tantrum? simply because of the food that you didn't like was there and, and insisted it be removed? Of course not. You would not give it that kind of energy. Would you condemn the people who liked it? No. You would simply focus on that which you like, and, and that's all. 
So she says, in some cases, to live the truth may not require physical action. Metaphysical action may be all it, re it requires. And, and we know that metaphysical action is much more powerful. We're learning that even in medicine now. Isn't that true? That, that, that the power of the mind is, is more effective than, you know, than, than the medicines that they give you. We're just, we're still learning. We're learning. And, and, and it's, this is all about looking at things from the soul level, from the soul level at that, at that place. So yes, we are all in need of uh, raising our consciousness, but in the process, we are, we are also in need of helping each other. And that's what unity principle number five is about. That's where the practicality in the spirituality lies as part of the formula for the five principles. So the, the central question in principle five asks this, what is mine to do? Ask yourself that question. What is mine to do? What is yours to do? What is ours to do as a community? Every effort, however small it may be, is a step in the right direction of bettering the human experience on this planet. Walk the walk. We talked about that in, in one of the videos, right, Teresa? That long ago, when the planet was beginning to kind of take hold, all there was were these little single cells, little bacteria. And they, they, they produced oxygen because there was no oxygen in the atmosphere on Earth. It was nothing. So it was, they, they're, they're ex, ex, when they expel you know, the breathing, they let out oxygen. But these little creatures that would live like two weeks in the, the, the video says, you can imagine that, that they, if they were c considering, like we think about what we do and how our purpose and things like that, if they were thinking about that, they would, say, they would probably live and die and said, man, I lived for two weeks and, and the way I found the planet is the way I left it. I don't see any difference. But yet, those little tiny things over millions of years created the atmosphere and ultimately the ozone that the earth has that, let, that allowed it to open up to this greater, more complex life. And so you could say that, that if they did that, that and, and they had no idea, no vision of that we were to come, that Unity Spiritual Center of Georgetown was, gonna, was way up, way down the line. <laughs> they did not have that vision, but they're the ones who were responsible for it. And so the same can be said of you. What are you responsible for that you may have no clue, no clue what you're contributing to down the road? It is so big. And I really like that thought. And we all did. And, and so these are our five principles that guide our philosophy. There are reference points. So let me conclude the talks about the five principles with a quick overview of them real quickly. Principle one, we establish that as omnipotent, omniscient, everywhere presence, notice I said presence, not present. Presence. God is all there is. Principle one says, if God is omnipotent, all-knowing, everywhere, present, all-powerful, then what else is there? Nothing. Everything is God. And, and Reverend Kelly Isola in the, in the book, the little booklet of the five principles, she says for her that, that from that all there isness, then all, all the other four principles are really just putting to practice that oneness that we all are. And so because everything is God, or that if God is all there is, then it follows logically that we are an expression of that oneness. And so is everything else. This is the grand paradise. The one being the infinite many. The one being the infinite many. That's a paradox. So in a real sense, we are, we are God because of principle one. And I know some people are uncomfortable with that idea that we are God. That's, wow. Well, it, it's because of this oneness idea. You just have to let it kind of soak in in a different kind of way. And then principle three reminds us that 
we have this creative nature at, that as images of this oneness, then we have this power. And the key to the power is in the thoughts and the feelings that we have, that we hold. And then principle four beckons us to align ourselves with this power and to use that power, the one presence and the one power, in a way that it guides us. It's our intuition, our, our GPS, or as Reverend, uh, uh, what was the name? Uh, from the first book, whatever. Uh, he says, the SPS, the spiritual positioning system. Reverend Smith, that was his name. And, and that's what guides us towards the direction that, uh, of, of a higher good for everybody. And then finally, principle five asks us the question I just said. What is mine to do? What special gift do you have that can serve the greatest good to humanity? And that answer can only come from within by listening, by practicing to listen to the voice within. We all need to do it. So I'm going to invite you, I'm going to close out this with a short little tiny meditation and ask Dan to give me some little background music. I invite you to close your eyes if you are comfortable with that. And just a short middle meditation on principle five. What is mine to do? How am I to serve? I have come to this human experience not just for myself, but for others. And I stand ready to share God's love with them. That God expresses through me and as me. I make myself ready. I ask for my perfect place of service. I live the truth knowing that God is all, that I am God, that we are co-creators, and I am never separate from divine radiance. I let my heart expand for those who need love. I give as it has been given to me, and I am grateful for us all. So have a blessed, blessed week.